and uh, before I do that, uh, before I let you mount, I need to add uh, some birds to this painting mm -hmm. as well. So I have been studying this uh, uh, chain of the birds mm -hmm. recently. So um, because I did a big project on stage mm -hmm. with my high school uh, reunion. Mm -hmm. So uh, the theme is uh, White G's Returning Home. <laughs> we have 40 year reunion. Oh, yeah. wow. So we, we, I did that on stage in, in three minutes. Mm -hmm. I had practiced one year of doing this. Three minutes. Three minutes done. Minutes, yeah. So I know how to do it. <laughs> All right. So just. Uh, But before we wet mount it, uh, let me show you if it, we had enough. It's yeah, it should be. Good. Okay. Um, so it's the the birds, like the migration birds, um, indicate uh, seasonal seasonal change. It could be a, uh, early autumn. Mm -hmm. Seasonal. Yeah. yeah, it says that the oasis on the desert uh -huh. yeah, of the desert. Okay, um, so before we wet mount, I just use a hair dryer to dry it, and you can start to blend the. Do you have any alum? Alum? Um, I don't I think so, but I think it's okay without it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, because uh, this paste has no gluten in it, <laughs> it has no attraction for bugs. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's more. Well, Henry and I were talking over lunch about wet mounting, and uh, you know, I, everything I learned about wet mounting comes from the video that Henry has on his YouTube website. But I have tried a few modifications to what Henry has proposed, and he thought we should demonstrate, or I should demonstrate. Um, uh, now, stretching and wet mounting is an art form, not a science. Failure is always an option, all right? So, so, but Henry's going to entrust to me his masterpiece here, and we're going to, we're going to, so this could end up wonderfully or maybe not so wonderfully, but we're going to do it. Um, normally with a painting like Henry's, I would spray it with a fixative. Um, you can, you can spend five dollars and buy a can of fixative, a thick lick. Uh, the, the main purpose of fixative is when you have Heavy, thick colors, particularly red. Red is the big problem child. You want to spray the fixative on it. But I found that you don't need to buy the expensive fixative. You can go to Walmart, my favorite place for art supplies, and buy a can of White Rain hairspray. I don't use it. The women tell me it's the bottom of the line. Oh, uh, the, the aerosol. The aerosol, White Rain. You don't want any perfume. You don't want anything. You, what, what it really is is spray acrylic. That's what it is. And the the White Rain works great, and it costs a dollar a can, so or thereabouts. So cheap. Falling in my Chinese heritage is always important. Uh, so, uh, so I spray it with the fixative, let it dry. But we don't have any fixative today, but the painting looks really pretty good. I mean, there's no thick colors in there, so it should, should do just fine. Um, uh, the glue here, Henry has it made up. This is a little too thick for my taste. Uh, yeah, we need to thin. We need to thin it out. Do we have more water? Oh, let me take these some clean ones. Do you do you need hot water? No, just the cold water. It, it, it's not lumpy. Um, I use the same. I, I use all-purpose white flour. I mean. It's amazing how many day, people today don't know what all-purpose white flour is, but it's, your mothers all know what it is, but uh, all-purpose white flour, you can buy in any store, two-pound bag, don't buy a five or ten pound, just two pounds, 
And uh, what I do is I put it in with hot water and then I use my immersion blender. You know what an immersion mm -hmm. blender is? Yeah. It, you don't need to have to kind of get rid of the lumps. I mean, the immersion blender but turns it into froth almost. So it's, the lumps are all gone. Um, so he buys the $1.99 hairspray and he's got a $49 immersion blender. <laughs> well, actually, Walmart, my favorite store for art supplies, $15 for immersion blender. Oh, really? And you can use it for making your margaritas if you don't have a blender either. So. After using these oils. I don't know if we want to thin out the whole bag. No. Or sugar. What's this? Oh, this is the back. Yeah. Uh, let's 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 make it in one of these here. Uh, I'm not familiar with this exact product because I use the all-purpose white flour. Yeah, if you can get it to kind of. Do you put alum in with the white flour? Then? Yes, I do. You have to. Where do you buy your alum? From? Alum can be purchased at any large grocery store in the spice department. I never found. I went to three grocery stores. Well, they, don't they need have a, it. They, it's a, you know, if you went to a big one like a Vons, you probably yeah. find. No, they, they're, they they're filed alphabetically. Alum right at the top. Oh, it, it's used for pickle it's making. A glue and Michaels. You can use. My mom has. I'll call okay. canning books. They have it there? There's an artist glue. About a quarter of a teaspoon. That's a lot. Uh, usually I make a cup of the glue at a time. Yeah. yeah, it should be like milk, you know. It's just thin. Okay, we'll put more in. More in. Do you want more? Do you want more? Yeah, just put more. I think, you know, it feels like thin. It feels a little thin to me. Yeah. I got paper towels, I got this, we get this out. That, that, that roll is for paper. Oh, that's the backing roll? Okay. Okay, can you put some more in? Okay, uh, we're, we're using the acrylic sheet here. The beauty of the acrylic sheet is after you have uh, stretched it, you can see your problems. Instant gratification. Yeah, it's, it, unlike you, you can stretch on a piece of wood or some masonite or something like that, but it's not as satisfying as seeing your problems right away, you know? So, so that's why, I, and then of course, I would use the smooth side. If you've been sanding your sheet, don't use that side because we want it smooth enough so that it'll eventually detach. And um, I want a little thicker. Uh, now I use uh, all-purpose white flour, uh, about a, uh, I'm trying to remember, it's like about two teaspoons or two tablespoons and uh, with a cup of hot water and about a quarter of a teaspoon or, or yeah, a quarter of a teaspoon of alum. And then I put it in there and we, I use the immersion blender. Makes it nice and foamy. And it should have the consistency of like homogenized milk. If you know that it, it's like whole milk. Yeah. yeah, whole milk, you know, 6% milk. Or pet milk. Yeah. I think. Actually, you know what? This paper, it looks like a semi size. Okay. May have almond in it already. Okay. Well, <laughs> a little more. Okay. Just a little more, and then we'll get going here. I think it's enough. For me. <laughs> All right. Now, the, the paper will stretch when you do wet stretching, right? So uh, what I do is I start from the center and work out, and as I work out, actually a little bit of a bow will form in the paper because that's the paper expanding. Now. This is what I find sometimes people go wrong, is they try to rush the process. They think they can do it in like two minutes, but it sometimes takes like five, because the paper, you know, it's trying to relax and, <laughs> and stretch. And if you rush it too fast, it, it just doesn't happen. So when I've done that clip, I've, I've very, very lightly misted it. 
Yeah. Just so it, it starts to yeah. relax. I, I even have the mister here, but we're going to skip that step. I, the goal oh, of my, my process, go the goal of my process is, is to skip as many steps as possible. Okay, now you see how I'm starting in the middle. That's good. And I'm working my way out. Now, you, you know, you could work from one side or the other, but this is the way I've always done it. And you can see it's, it's the paper is beginning to saturate. Normally I use a little bigger brush, but all I had in my bag was this one inch, one and a half inch hockey. But sometimes I'll use like a two inch hockey and you know, you just kind of work it out. Uh, this paper is absorbing the water pretty good or the glue mix pretty good. I'm working my way out. And you can see that a little bit of a ridge is forming here. That's 100% typical. And you know this it's kind of like you're working in a little crater here as you keep going around and around and around. Um, by doing it this way, I pretty well have eliminated all the bubbles that are in here. Uh, so you always start from a wet end and work out rather than touch a dry area. So oh yeah, because you get a wrinkle otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always. I mean, I, I later I'll show you it was my way. <laughs> you, you start from left yeah. to right and you yeah, just go across. But right? I think. It, you every you and Jack. Yeah, every way it works as long as you know well, the nature of the yeah, yeah. material. Oftentimes, I find you know it helps if you put on a big movie on the TV set, <laughs> so that you're not really you don't really feel particularly. You got something to keep you entertained while you're yeah. in the stress. It's like you grind your ink. Yeah, <laughs> you don't waste your time. I should and, and meditate. Norm <laughs> normally, I, I get I have six pieces of acrylic and I stretch six at a time and it shoots a whole afternoon, but then I got six all done. You know. Now this is, you can see, this is going on pretty thick here. Um, this, the, the, a lot of this glue will eventually find its way into my backing paper here. Um, so I'm just keep working it around. See, there's just no way of rushing this. I mean, the, the paper will saturate at its own pace. Uh, How hard are you pressing? Hardly pressing at all. I'm just, I'm just, kind, of, I'm just kind of floating it in there. Tear it pretty easily, mm -hmm. I would think. Um, Once it's uh, uh, attached to the, okay. Uh, see, I, I, I just want to point out. See, you saw what I did. If you if you do this always this way, you won't have. But if you it all backtrack, you'll flip the end up, and that's just a problem. So you know, this idea is just you know keep going one way. But of course, the water to do the work, not the brush. Mm -hmm. Well, it, because the. The brush can't really do the work. The water has to penetrate the paper. Yeah, and if you, that's the point. If you, if you push it too much, and then you see I'm just running the glue off the paper here. And we just got the gobs of glue. I, I, I use the gobs of glue method. Okay, I've got the top kind of done there. I can see it works. Now, uh, over here we've cut, and this is always a good idea to cut your backing sheet before you even get started. We have it ready. Backing sheet should be at least an inch margin all the way around. A little more, that's okay. Not the end of the world. Because that's your uh, ear backing sheet. So, um, the margin between the two sizes? Well, you know, having a bigger margin helps several ways when you get around to mounting it, too. Uh, you know, sometimes if you have to bring the edge right up to the end of your edge of your mat, having a little mar margin there. Okay, now this is really nice and thick. I mean, I got plenty on here. Um, plenty, plenty, plenty. I don't see any bubbles. Like a well, what you're, I think you're seeing is, is my glue that's kind of standing on the surface here. Oh, see, I flipped that up. You don't want to do that. That's just a you know, it's not the end of the world, but you know, it's just a nuisance. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I just tore it. Oh, this is just perfect. This is an educational opportunity. Hold, hold on, I just look at how he fixed the. Okay, yeah. okay, I, I just, see, this is another reason why you should pay attention and not lecture while you're doing this. But, uh, but the, the, the paper now has reached a point of where it's almost like jello. And I'm afraid that it, some parts of this may not be 100% salvageable, but uh, we'll, we'll let the master give a try here. 
Because this is this paper is a little more fragile than what I'm used to working with. Did you break it? No, well, it was I, torn. I it was torn. Oh, I it was it was torn. No, I think I flipped the corner and tore it. Tore it the same side. No, but it was torn. It was torn. No, his other piece was torn, not this one. Okay, so uh, just be careful. Roll it out. Okay. Now the page. What we can do is we can take Try this the, side. We Try can, this side. We can take the uh, corner out and then redo the signature. <laughs> That's a, something you, you fake a painting. You, know, you can take some signature out, put the master's. <laughs> Zhang Da Qian's signature there. <laughs> uh, this is the backing sheet. Uh, the smooth side you normally paint on, that's down. The rough side of the painting is up. And you go rough to rough. You don't need to see your margins version? I'm going to run so much glue off of here, it's going to flood everything. You don't have to clean the margin? Between the, don't you have to clean up the glass? No, it'll pull loose. Oh. Really? So that's, yeah, well, let's just see what Failure is always an option. Uh, so I normally, I, um, this will probably slap off a little bit. And may have Do you have the right paint. side of the paper down? The rough side is, is painting, rough. so it's rough to rough. Okay, and then I kind of keep an eye on this here. The, if you can lay this on the, correctly the first pass, it makes life easier for everybody and everything. Uh, Maybe you need uh, another extra hand? Maybe you need an extra hand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, grab that. Okay. If when I first do, do this, I do the big brush just to, just to lay it down. And normally, I like to back with the same paper I paint on because all papers have certain differential expansion rates. Um, so that if you're using the same paper that you're painting on to stretch, the chances of having a problematic uh, um, you know, then you have, you know, sometimes the paper will, the, the artwork will expand at a different rate. This is a brayer. It's normally used for um, uh, in, 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 in wood block printing, it's used for inking the block. But the brayer, I have found, works wonderful for, for this process. And again, I'm following the same pattern of from the center out. And actually, you can see there's like kind of a bubble of, of glue that I'm pushing ahead of us as I push this out. Um, you know, this paper is so... Uh, so fragile that I don't know if I really want to do. Now, the one thing that I, I want to caution people on is I'm pushing this way. It's kind of like shaving. You don't want to go this way. That will tear the paper, especially in a such fragile state. But it's always straight lines, center out. I'm pushing the bubble of glue to the margins and then probably right off the, and onto Henry's, uh, Sheet here. It will <laughs> wash out. Um, now, I used to not do it this way. I used to try to save a white, I mean, dry piece of, of, of the margin. But after experimenting with it, I felt, and then I would use just regular painter's tape to anchor it down. But that's, you know, again, my whole theory has been trying to eliminate unnecessary steps. I uh, see Henry is actually actually pulled it off already. I, I don't think that's recoverable. But as an artist, I, I have. We can cut the con uh, off. I resigned it. <laughs> as an artist, <laughs> pepper towels there, please. As an artist, crisis and recovery is a phrase you should always think about. <laughs> I, I will read uh, title it. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, now we have uh, the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we changed the title. It was the uh, Oasis of the uh, Desert. Now I call it uh, Returning Jesus or something. <laughs> Returning or. Recovery from crisis. Yeah. Crisis and recovery. Recovery. Crisis recovery. <laughs> Now, this is pretty much good. Now, you know, sometimes people will use a tauntaun brush, boom, 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 but this is so, it's 100% it's saturated. If you want to touch it, you know, you can see how saturated it is. And it's just as saturated as can be. Uh, the glue is permeated all the way through the, uh, from the art. And see, I didn't add any more glue on the top. I didn't wet it anymore. It was just the glue itself is carried all the way through. Now, what I would do at this point is I would let it dry in the house out of the sun and wind for two days. Um, if the corners start to peel up a little bit, which I doubt it would be here because this is so anchored, then I would, I would put a little bit of blue tape once this has become... The, the blue painter's tape will not anchor if it's wet, but if it's dry, it will anchor. But it's wet now. But the, the corners always dry first. You need the blue tape like this? No, no. Yeah, this, this, this is what I would use. But it's no use putting it on now because it's wet. It's too wet. But it, 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 in the wind, you may need it. In the corners, it will, it, this, the corners will dry first. Yeah. And if it does start to peel up, then I would tape okay. it a little bit. That's, um, and, keep that in mind. And then, um, and then after it's, you know, if everything goes right and the humidity isn't too low today, then after two days, and usually I find two days is the right amount, mm -hmm. I would then come in with like a little knife like this and just start to pry up the corner and then kind of slide the knife in and it'll start to just break loose. Yeah, <laughs> stretch. Just, just very gently work it around. Uh, it should not be a struggle. If you should be able to take it off in like a couple of minutes. And the underside is will be as smooth as can be. Can you can take it all or not. I think it's a very contemporary way to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, just to review my error here. Um, Make it more valuable. I think it was 100% saturated. I was yammering away, and uh, you know, and I was I kind of. I forgot my own instruction. Mm -hmm. the, the, Flip. the, it flipped up, and the paper was now so fragile that it broke that little piece mm -hmm. off. If I had continued pressing the same way, it probably not would have happened. But anyway, Henry thought he would take it outside and try to dry it in the sun. That's mm -hmm. just the experiment. Which is, I mean, we're, we're pressing we're the outer another, limits. Another test uh, a risk we tried to take. So we're going to put it in the shade of the the porch. And yeah, so, I'll, can, I'll, can so it actually comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can pull yeah. it off, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, yeah, Let's yeah. take a picture yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's glued all the way around, it, 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 the, the acrylic is so smooth that yeah. it, it'll, it'll pull loose. I would not use it on the side that you just sand it though. No. That would probably be too rough. Mm -hmm. So could you might get more texture at home. Yeah, I have, I have several pieces of big acrylic, or, you know, acrylic, plexiglass, polycarbonate. There are differences that only a chemist would need to know. Uh, so, we put it on our window. You could we lift it off the table that we mounted on. This is simple as possible. Eliminate all unnecessary steps.